Imagine dealing with a massive stream of data and needing to count how many unique items exist. Counting them one by one isn't practical. It's too slow and takes up too much memory. Take Facebook for example. Every day it processes trillions of events, page visits, likes, shares. Storing every unique user ID just to count them would require terabytes of memory, making real-time analytics nearly impossible. And that is where Hyperlog Log or HLL comes in. Instead of tracking every item, HLL estimates the number of unique elements using just a few kilobytes of memory, while still maintaining over 98% accuracy. It's a game changer for large scale systems. And in this video, we'll break down Hyperlog Log step by step, starting from the most basic counting approach and gradually improving it with smarter techniques. Mastering Hyperlog Log isn't just about learning a cool algorithm. It's about understanding efficient data structures, probabilistic counting, and system design principles. If you can apply these concepts, you'll stand out in technical interviews and real-world engineering challenges. So, let's get started. First, let's talk about cardinality. Cardinality simply means the number of unique elements in a dataset. For example, a dataset like this has five unique elements, A, B, C, D, and E. So its cardinality is five. If you track unique visitors on Facebook in a week, the cardinality is the number of different users who visited, even if they're logged in multiple times. Now, cardinality is crucial in databases, analytics, and distributed systems because knowing how many unique elements exist helps optimize storage, indexing, and performance. For example, a table storing customer emails has high cardinality because it has many unique values. And a table storing customer subscription types, such as basic, premium, or VIP, has low cardinality due to few unique values. In big data and web analytics, counting unique website visitors is a cardinality problem. And tracking distinct search queries on Google is a cardinality problem. For small data sets, you can store all elements and count them directly. But for big data, billions or trillions of records, storing everything is impractical. The problem we are solving today is simple. How many unique visitors read a website in a day? At first glance, the obvious solution is to use a hash map. Storing unique identifiers like IP addresses or usernames to count distinct users. And this would give us an exact answer. But here is the catch. Scale. As the number of unique users grows, storing such a massive hash map becomes expensive in both memory and computation. It's simply not practical at a web scale. So what's the alternative? And do we even need an exact count? For most use cases like analytics and monitoring, a small margin of error is acceptable. We don't need absolute precision, just a good estimate. And this is why probabilistic <laughs> algorithms like Hyperlog Log are used to estimate cardinality efficiently without storing all elements. Let's take a step-by-step -step journey to understand how we evolve from a simple counting approach to the powerful Hyperlog Log algorithm. We'll start with a basic estimator, refine it with probability and hashing tricks, and then introduce buckets for better accuracy and finally arrive at Hyperlog Log. Take a look at this simple dataset. We have repeated numbers like 1234, 66, and 88 appearing multiple times. Each of these values is run through a hash function that yields a number between 0 and 1. Notice that every occurrence of 1234 maps to the same hash 0 0.2, and every 66 maps to 0 0.8, and so on. Building on the idea that identical inputs share the same hash value, we now use the smallest hash we have observed to estimate how many distinct values there are overall. Because we assume our hash function spreads values uniformly between 0 and 1. The minimum hash roughly scales like 1 over the number of unique items. So in this example, the smallest hash is 0 0.2. So we estimate the cardinality as 1 divided by 0 0.2, which is 5. But there is a problem. This method has high variance because it depends too much on the extreme value. If we happen to pick a very small number, our estimate can be wildly inaccurate. 
To reduce error, we introduce probabilistic approach. So instead of relying on the smallest value, we hash each item to create a random sequence of bits of zeros and ones. Now, we count how many trailing zeros appear in the hashed values. Now looking at our binary representation here, the maximum number of trailing zeros is 3. But why does this matter? When analyzing a set of binary numbers, the maximum trailing zeros gives us an estimate of how many unique numbers we have likely processed. You see, each binary number can end in either 0 or 1. And since these two values are equally likely, the probability of a number ending in 0 is 1 by 2. Now a number ending in two zeros has probability of 1 by 4, since there are four possible outcomes, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. A number ending in three zeros has probability of 1 by 8, and so on. In general, the probability of seeing n trailing zeros is 1 by 2 power n. And since the probability of encountering a number with n trailing zeros is 1 by 2 power n, it means that, on average, we need to scan through 2 power n unique numbers to find one with n trailing zeros. In our case, since maximum trailing zeros is 3, we estimate that we have likely processed around 2 power 3, which is 8 unique usernames. But if one of these numbers had a longer run of zeros, say 4 trailing zeros, our estimate would suddenly jump to 2 power 4, which is 16. So now we overestimate it, even though the true count is just 5 users. Now we could have also used leading zeros instead of trailing zeros. But trailing zeros are preferred in many cases because they are more uniformly distributed when using hash functions, making them more reliable for probabilistic counting. Regardless, this method still has high variance. If just one entry has an unusually long run of zeros, it can overestimate the count. So let's refine our approach to improve accuracy even further. Now, instead of relying on a single value, we introduce m buckets. Let's say we have 16 buckets in our case. And to decide which bucket an entry belongs to, we take the first few bits of its binary representation. Let's use 4 bits and convert them into a decimal number. This number acts as the bucket index and the remaining bits are sent to that specific bucket. Next, within each bucket, we calculate the maximum number of trailing zeros. For example, Assume we hash a value and get this. The first four bits, 1011, belongs to bucket number 11 because in decimal, 1011 is 11. Now, in a real-world big data scenario, 16 buckets would help reduce noise. But here, it inflates the estimate because we are working with very few elements. So in our example, for the sake of simplicity, we will go with 5 buckets since we got 5 usernames. Once we have the max trailing zeros in each bucket, we compute A sub M, the average across all buckets. And here, the term bucket of I represents the maximum number of trailing zero found in bucket I. And from our data set, we have the following trailing zero counts for each username. So we calculate an arithmetic mean, which is A sub M equal to sum of trailing zeros divided by the total entries, which is buckets in our case. So A sub M becomes 0 plus 3 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 divided by 5, which becomes 0 0.8. Instead of just using the largest trailing zero count, which might be an outlier, we in fact compute the average trailing zeros across all buckets. Our estimate now has a new formula. 2 power average trailing zeros across all buckets. To further refine this, researchers found that multiplying the result by M that is the number of buckets, and a constant factor of say 0.79, which was derived from some sort of experimentation, provides the best results. And so we end up with this formula. Let's apply this formula to our data set and break it down step by step. The formula for our estimating unique entries is constant times m times 2 power a sub m, where m is number of buckets we use 4 in our case. A sub M is the average number of trailing zeros across all buckets, which is 0 0.8 in our example, and a constant 0 0.79, which has been determined through experimental analysis. And plugging in our values, we get the number of unique entries as approximately 5.5.
And this tells us that based on our data set and the trading zeros method, we estimate that there are approximately 5 to 6 usernames in our set. Now, taking the logarithm of all number of unique elements tell us how many bits are needed to represent that number. For example, if we estimate 1000 unique elements, then it would be log of 1000 base 2, which is 10. This means we need about 10 bits to store the number 1000 in binary. If n is 8, its binary representation is 1000, which requires 4 bits, since 2 power 3 is equal to 8. And if n equal to 1000, its binary representation is this, which requires 10 bits, and since 2 power 10 is equal to 1000. More generally, the number of bits needed to represent n is approximately log of n with base 2. This works because Taking log base 2 of a number tells us the power to which 2 must be raised to to get that number, which corresponds to the number of bits required. For example, log of 8 base 2 is 3. 3 bits is needed since 2 power 3 is equal to 8. Log of 1000 base 2 is approximately 10, which means 10 bits are needed since 2 power 10 is almost equal to 1000. So log of n gives us the approximate bit length required to store n in binary. All right, we know that the number of trailing zeros r follows a logarithmic pattern. On average, an entry with r trailing zeros appears once every two power r entries. We also estimated n using log of n, meaning the longest sequence of trailing zeros should be proportional to log of n. And if we take another log of log of n, it helps us estimate the actual trailing zeros distribution more efficiently. For example, if log of 1000 is approximately 10, then log of 10 is 3.3. And this tells us that the longest trailing zero count is roughly 3 to 4 bits long. And which is why this improved algorithm is called log log. Because if we take the log of the log of the estimated unique count, we get an approximation of the number of bits required to store the highest trailing zeros count. And this makes the method incredibly space efficient, requiring only O of 1 memory, while still maintaining the same time complexity as before. And while it's still an approximation, it's already a huge improvement over our earlier method, bringing us closer to hyperloglog. -log. The problem with the log log algorithm is that it's highly sensitive to outliers. If even one bucket contains a significantly larger value than the others, it can still skew the arithmetic mean, leading to an inaccurate estimate. And to fix this, hyperloglog -log replaces the arithmetic mean with the harmonic mean, which helps to reduce the effect of extreme values. The harmonic mean is computed using the formula like this. Here, instead of directly averaging the maximum training zeros in each bucket, we take the reciprocal of each value sum them up and then divide by the total number of buckets. And this approach smooths out outliers making our estimation more robust. Now, after plugging in the harmonic mean, our final formula for estimating unique entries transforms into the hyperloglog -log equation, which looks like this. Let's plug in our actual bucket values to this formula. Summing these values, we get 3.625. And now we compute the harmonic mean using our formula of a sub h, which then becomes 5 by 3.625 or 1.379. And the final formula for unique entries is constant times m times a sub h, where constant is 0 0.79, the same pre-computed values for best accuracy, m equal to 5, and harmonic mean computed from trading zeros. Substituting these values, we get 5.45, which means estimated unique entries is 5.45, the true count being 5 in our case. And so the accuracy in our case is 108.97%, which is, of course, a slight overestimation. But our estimate is very close to the actual count, with just a smaller overestimation of about 9%. For companies like Facebook, Google, and Twitter, tracking billions of unique users, hashtags, or page views daily is a massive challenge. Storing everything isn't practical, but hyperloglog -log makes it possible with fast approximate counting, 
minimal memory usage, and scalability for big data and distributed systems. And that is why HyperLogLog is the go-to solution for real-time analytics, monitoring, and large-scale data streaming where an exact count isn't necessary, but a highly efficient estimate is. Now with this understanding, you are well equipped to tackle system design discussions and scalability challenges. But if you want to dive even deeper, check out Facebook's detailed blog post on how they use it HyperLogLog in production. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.